guys and welcome to today's vlog. Today I'm going to be doing a one month update on my little baby box. No, I do not have a box. A Can I get quiet on the set please? Welcome to today's vlog. Today's um, vlog is going to be a little different. It's going to be more of a sit down video than an actual vlog. I am going to do my baby's one month update. For those of you who don't know, I had a baby. His name is Fox Parker and I had him uh, about a month ago. It's more like a month and two weeks but this is when I have a chance to actually film this. So. This is his one month update. Um, I'm basically going to talk about what's happened from the day he was born until he was one month. So his progress at that time. Not just like where he's at right now because where he's at right now is completely different. So he was born via C-section at uh, 39 weeks. It was planned. So that uh, he was born six pounds nine ounces and the length of 20 and a half inches um i don't know i had to do that just in case you didn't know what 20 and a half inches is this is not it uh it's more like this um yeah so everything went great um with the c-section uh, i did get sick during the c-section but let's just make a video about my c-section c-section in another time so let's just do his update. Uh, he was born um, just fine. Um, there was no issues. Um, he came out. He came out. So let's start talking about his feedings. So I am breastfeeding him and at the hospital, that's what I told them. I wanted to breastfeed and they're, they're very all about breastfeeding. So uh, my concern was that I wasn't gonna produce enough milk. With Haley, my first baby, I didn't start producing not even the whatever that thing's called the thing that comes out before your milk comes in I didn't have that come out until I went home already with the baby so days had passed she wasn't getting anything so we actually had a formula feed her before we even went home because she wasn't producing any pee or poop because she wasn't getting anything so um, with him, I was very concerned that that was going to happen again. But no, as soon as day one, um, he started getting the colostra, colostra, colostra something. Anyways, he started getting that. Before I even left the hospital, my milk was already coming out, which that usually takes uh, a couple of days to come out. But he was already starting to get my milk. So um, feedings were going great. The lactation consultant was coming in. Uh, he was... The first day, um, he had eight diapers, you guys. Eight poops. Not just wet diapers. Eight poops in the first 24 hours. And usually, like the nurses were telling me, they'll have like one big poop, like one poop, um, and that's it, the first day. And then they have like eight poops the next day, and so forth. And so when they weighed him, um, he had lost over he lost 11% of his body weight and uh, that is no bueno <laughs> normally they want you to lose they want the baby to lose just up to 10% of their body weight but because they had pumped me so much with liquids before the c-section and he actually like um, pooped so so much the first day that is why they thought I lost so much so there was like concern at first and then there wasn't concern because they kept monitoring monitoring mon words guys words are hard they kept checking on us every time we would feed him to make sure he was getting milk and he was the milk was squirting milk was squirting everywhere this kid was getting milk so that wasn't a big concern they just wanted me to check with my with his pediatrician to make sure his body weight would come back to normal um, within the week or two just to make sure that he is still getting milk. Having that said, when we took him to his first doctor's appointment, 
he had not reached the point where he was back at 6.9. Uh, he was at 6, but not 9 ounces. Um, so they said um, they wanted us to start formula feeding him. Not exclusive formula feed. It, want, it was more like, let's feed him with the breast milk and then afterwards give him an ounce of formula just to make sure that he is is getting really fed um, just they wanted to bulk him up as soon as possible because he hadn't reached that milestone so that's kind of what we did and at first that really messed up his diapers um, because uh, he was pooping like eight diapers every single day um, and all of a sudden once we gave him the for a little bit of formula no more poop it was one day that was three days and no poop so we completely stopped giving him formula until he started but he wasn't having pain or anything um, until he started pooping again um, and then he finally when he started pooping again we went ahead and um, introduced the formula a little bit um, we did go back to the doctor and then following week and he he was back at his normal weight at his birth weight which were that's where he needed to be um, and so the doctor said let's just continue the formula until his two month update and see where he is with weight and then just go exclusive to breast um, either pumping or breast you know just breast milk breast milk breast milk um, every time I think of breast milk I think of Cambodian breast milk because of Dave Chappelle. Anyways, anyone get that reference? No, just me. He's currently um, eight pounds two ounces. So in a month, he has gained like two pounds. Um, but he, um, I'm still giving him formula just until the two months. So he is being fed both times. I do have the times where he's really on schedule, and then other times where he's just like. Snacking, 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 snacking all day on my boobs. Just all day long. That's all he wants. He is on a pacifier because if not, my boobs would be raw. So let's not talk about his sleep. Sleeping patterns. He's actually really good at sleeping. Sort of. Um, I, I think he's just like a newborn. They're going to wake up at night to be fed. But I don't feel like it's he's waking up all night long um with my firstborn i was kind of more like she was so colicky that she was waking up a lot at night um just in pain but at the two month mark she would just sleep through the night but would wake up with pain so when she had pain and with this one he is waking up um like around midnight one and then he'll wake up again like around four um, 4.30, sometimes 5. And so he wakes up twice, um, but it's not, and then it's like, he wakes up twice at, at night, and it's not a big deal, but it's a little bit hard on me because like, okay, so he wakes up, and then you're feeding him, and that's going to take a while, and you have to stay awake, and then um, you have to change his diaper and then you have to like make sure he swaddled and goes back to sleep and then I'm awake so I it's it's getting easier on me to like okay now he's asleep now let me go to sleep but at the beginning the first month I was very much of like I'm right awake I can't go back to sleep I'm gonna be there on my phone or on watching TV until I slowly go back to sleep and then when I would finally knock out, oh, it's 4 o'clock now, 4.30, it's time to uh, wake up again. And that was very hard on me to be able to like, okay, put him down and then go to sleep right away. Because if I don't do that, I'm not going to be able to function. Like, there is no sleep when they sleep when you have another child. With the firstborn, it was a lot easier. I would actually rest, maybe not sleep, but rest because I could just lay there and didn't have to like, um, I could clean, but because it was just me and my husband, the place would stay clean and I would actually be able just to like hang out with my baby. And when you have another child, no, it's like the place is a mess and you're trying to give the other child some time, 
Um, meanwhile, we were trying to like have the place not look like a total disaster because um, you do have your other child running around and you have to make sure you're feeding the other child. So sleep, I'm getting adjusted to it. At the end of this month, he started to um, sleep less in the day, which is great because then you get to talk to them and he is already talking. So let's start talking about milestones. So at the one, at the end of the one month, he is already starting to coo, like going like, like trying to talk to you. He is um, already lifting his head, which he kind of did like the first week was already lifting his head. Like he would be here and his sister would be right here. So he would lift his head and move it closer to be with her. Um, he does, I, I try to do tummy time with him. And in, when he does tummy time, he doesn't lift his head. He actually lifts his feet and thrusts. So his bottom half is like just thrusting while he's just like, just chilling, just, but then when I have him on my chest, he's constantly doing tummy time on my chest and lifting his head. So it's not something I'm concerned about that he's not able to lift his head because he is, he's very strong, very strong, but um, he just doesn't like lifting his head during the designated tummy time. Um, when you lay him down and you try to like kind of like pretending you're lifting his arms he will lift his head up also but then he gets mad because he thinks you're going to pick him up and then you don't and then he gets mad and then we'll scream like a little baby scream like a, uh, like frustrated which is hilarious um and then we'll pick him up because we're not dicks well we are but like not to the newborns oh. um, he is already turning um, and then he scoots already. He's already a month old, but this is towards the end of the month where he like, I will notice in the bassinet, he is like, his feet are touching the end of the bassinet. And then um, if I ignore him when he is, um, he doesn't cry for feedings. He kind of like is, is moaning. And if I ignore that, he pushes himself and then his head is at the end of the bassinet. So he's pushing himself and he does, he has rolled to his side, not completely rolled over, but he does roll to his side because he doesn't like laying on his back to sleep. Now, that is a huge thing, you guys. Babies, you put them on their back, you put their head up. Um, that is what they tell you at the hospital. It's where the doctors tell you, everyone tells you, they need to sleep, head, like, on their back. This guy hates sleeping on his back. He likes sleeping on his side. He's a newborn. Why is he already flipping? To make sure to keep noise in the house. Like, when they're napping, keep TVs on, make noise, just so the baby gets used to going to sleep with noise. And um, during the day, have like lights on so they know it's nap time, that it's the daytime, and they'll go to sleep knowing that it's daytime. And then at night, um, have everything dark for them so then they know it's day and light. <sighs> Easier said than done. I'll tell you what, because um, this kid will not sleep if it's like super bright he doesn't like sleeping like he wants you to turn all everything down he will be fighting sleep it is time for nap he is he's a little cranky because he's sleepy and but if there's light he will not go to sleep and as soon as you close that many blinds on him knocks out he likes it dark and he likes it quiet um he just really likes it quiet don't make noise and which I get like I don't like noise or light um, but during nap times like you kind of want to keep moving because later on we don't want to always be tippy toeing around him when he is asleep um, you don't want to be you know because uh, then you can't live your life so but I'm gonna do what I'm gonna do to make sure he falls asleep now we live in a pretty in a lot bigger place than we used to. I understand in an apartment when we when we had Haley, yeah, it sucked when you had to put her down and you had to be quiet and your walls are so thin and you're in the other room and you can barely turn on your TV because you don't want to wake up the baby. But we live in a place now that it's two-story um, house, so I feel confident that even if we have to do that, like I could put him in his room, close the door, the walls are pretty thick here, that I could be watching TV in the other room and he's not going to be waking up because he can't hear it. Um, so I'm going to do what I got to do. This. So let's talk about the biggest challenges right now I have with him. Um, I have no challenges with him per se, 
my biggest challenge is having two kids <laughs> yeah it's the having to drop off one at school when it's really cold out and you don't want your newborn to get sick so you have to bundle them up but at the same time I can't um, take them in the carry-on uh, like their um, car seat because I just had a c-section and I shouldn't even be driving right now but I have to drive my kid to school and so I have to get up I even though I wasn't supposed to be driving yet I get up I drive my kid to school I have to get my my newborn out um, of the car seat um, and bundle him up baby wear him then take her to her school see her walk in and then go inside my car and it's like so much more time and so much um, it's just your concern that they're gonna get sick because it's cold you're taking them from the warmth to the cold and then back in and most of the time it's like right when he wants to breastfeed um, he's out and so it makes him cranky he doesn't like driving in the car seat um, that's another big thing he doesn't like he does not like car seats that um, we'll talk about the car seat thing in my next update my two-month update because um, that kind of started at the one month mark so I'm gonna leave that there but that's an issue we're having where he does not like the car seat so he, he's such a good baby I will give you this he's such a good baby he doesn't get colicky knock on wood he doesn't get um, fussy he doesn't get he's just I'm hungry feed me you're not gonna listen to me I'm gonna keep moaning you don't listen I'm gonna start crying that's his biggest thing right now um, he is pooping a lot you guys though I'll give you that he poops a lot with Haley she would give you like one poop a day and it was so massive it would just go up her back it was so big and him he gives you like six to eight diapers a day poops um, just little poops 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 little poops little poops but obviously you have to change them right away because then you don't want him to get all rashy but um, Haley would just give you a giant poop that no diaper could contain and he gives you a bunch of poops throughout the day hey it's I like his idea better because it's not ruining clothes um, and he she my husband likes her poops better because he would only have to do one big diaper change but I'm like dude we would have to shower her every time the diaper change because it goes up to her hair so now yeah, that's it you guys I hope you guys enjoyed his one month update I really am gonna try and keep up with them because I regret not doing that with Haley and I really want to see where they are um go back and see like you know milestones because you do forget it you forget you try to write it down you forget to do that so if I sit down and write it I mean like actually do it I could go back and um remember how he was when he was one month he was a good baby let's see how long that lasts good baby formula breast milk this guy loves boobs you guys loves boobs he's always on my boob and uh, they're doing okay they're doing okay but getting a little rough